Hey and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video we're going to look at activating dimensions. Ooh, sounds pretty pretty great, doesn't it? Activating dimensions. So uh, before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope that's why you're here, hope you do, then please demolish the like button. It really, really helps me out quite a lot. Okay, getting into it now. Activating dimensions. Well, it's like, eh. Activating dimensions, you might think, well, there are dimensions here, we want to activate them. What does that even mean, the activating part? Well, <laughs> there's actually a specific tool called Activate Dimensions, which is very underrated, little known, basically not used at all. And I will say I have fallen a victim of this because I don't really notice it all the time. I don't think about it. But my hope is that this video will not only inform you of this great tool, but also enlighten you to use it more and find new ways to use it because it is extremely helpful and perhaps more useful than you even think and more useful than even I think. So hopefully by the end of the video, you can understand what the power of this is. Very, very simple thing, yet the power of it. Okay. So let's say I come in here and I look at this wall. When I click on it, I get these dimensions and they're, they're temporary dimensions. We can change the color of these. We can do a lot of things like that. I don't care about that. But what I do care about is like seeing these dimensions and then being able to use them. When I select any sort of element, I'm going to typically get these. And that, of course, that varies um, depending on the element and other conditions because it is based on what is around this element that it's ultimately dimensioning to and you know, giving you references. That's cool. That's good to have. Obviously, if I select certain elements that aren't really even model elements like this room, it's not going to give me any dimensions because the room is based on where the walls are and everything, but regardless. So if I click on this wall, for example, we do see these. But if I were to select another wall, it, we don't see them at all. And, and yeah, that's the unfortunate part is I, I might want to be able to use those in another way by selecting, even when I select more than one wall or more than one element. So let's see how we use them. Well, if I first select this, I can see, well, you know, that number isn't quite... 14, 5, 14, 6. It looks like it's supposed to be 14 and a half feet, but it's not quite. So this, what this does is allows me to access these dimensions that are temporary. Yeah, obviously they're not showing up, but I can make them permanent if I click this and I can make that temporary turn into a permanent dimension. I don't like that at all. But the nice thing about this, if I were to do this, is that I could then select it and that would become usable much like this temporary dimension. So anyways, I don't care about any of this. But let's say I wanted to make this actually 14 and a half. Well, I can literally do it right here and it would move the wall and it's hard to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and make this 13 and you can see the wall actually moves. Like that's the point. That's the point of these temporary dimensions. They tell you uh, references to elements close by. And not only that, you can use them to move these other elements that you have selected. Okay. So activating dimensions, when we refer to activating dimensions, uh, always think of these temporary dimensions. So basically activating temporary dimensions. Ooh. Okay. Given all of that, what this is going to allow us to do is to select multiple objects at the same time and then use those quote temporary dimensions, but they don't normally show up. And I, I believe the reason for that is, is if I select this element and then I select that element, we can see the temporary dimensions we get by default in this view and where I am and everything. But if it were to give us that for every single element I might select at once, you know, the entire screen would be filled with garbage, gobbledy mess of dimensions that we don't need. So how can we access these? Well, if I select these two, for example, and I want to, let's say I want to change uh, where they are in the room to something else without having to draw specific dimensions like this that I really don't want to have to do just to move these walls around. Yeah, you know, like I said, I can do this and they can activate and move them, whatever. That's great. But let's click them both. We don't see temporary dimensions, but to see them, there's a fun little button up here, the top left. Oh my goodness. Look in the green area. There's a lot here. Not only is it a lot of information, but there's sometimes other options, settings that we can work with that give us extra functionality in Revit. In this case, activate dimensions is one of the most underrated and underused. I basically don't people, I don't see people use it. And I am a victim of that. I don't use it enough myself. So let's click this and see what happens. I click this and I suddenly get the references, temporary references, temporary dimensions to these walls. And so the cool thing is here, I say, well, maybe it's because I can see that this wall, the edge of the wall is 710 and whatever change. 
to this wall, I might decide, I need to actually make that six feet or whatever it might be. Or maybe in the instance of this one, given that this one is 15.3, maybe I need, I actually need 10 feet. This is a, a smaller storage room. So let's make this 10 feet. So when I do that, I can see, well, of course, I have an issue here with this door, but I was able to move both of those walls at once. Now that is absolutely mind blowing for someone who doesn't think to press the activate dimensions button like me. I never think to do that, but sure. Um, let's take this to the next level. Let's say I want this entire room to get bigger. I can select all of this here. And of course I get yeah, a bunch of stuff here, uh, extra selections that aren't just walls, doors, whatever. I can still activate dimensions and look, look at all the dimensions that came up. This is fantastic. Now, the thing to note, of course, <laughs> is that this moves everything that you have selected, which is obviously the power of this, but it's really nice to be able to do this. I can move all of this at once. So I, I know this is a bit arbitrary. Um, basically, all of these dimensions are a bit arbitrary, but they can we can use these as a way of moving objects. In this case, I'm moving this entire wall. Let's say I want to move all of these walls, these rooms, uh, north or up three feet. Well, I can change this dimension. I can really change any of these in that, that are in that plane to basically add three more. So in this case, I can change this four feet to a seven. And as soon as I do that, everything moves up three feet. It's beautiful. Now I want to show you another quick tool, which I've probably shown in other videos, but let's say I have this dimension and I know that this room needs to get smaller or I need to move these, these groups of walls down, uh, two feet, three inches. Let's just do that. I can actually do math like as if it were some kind of an Excel cell or an Excel formula right here in this dimension. So I can, what I need to do is add an equals at the beginning, because it'll bark at you if you don't. I can take this number and say, I, I don't know what this number is minus two feet, three inches. I don't really care. I could do the math pretty easily just looking at this because I picked that number. So if I do minus two feet, three and press enter because I have an equals at the beginning, I get exactly what I want, which is, you know, that is the correct number. Um, but that's just another way of using these. Obviously you can use that kind of a formula type of thing with any sort of dimension that you use, but this works great if you're selecting all of these and then activating dimensions. I love it so much. Also know that you can like multiply and divide and add parentheses. Like you can take this, these little formulas to the next level Okay, so that's cool. Now, not only that, but let's go into 3D. So we're gonna work with a similar type of thing here. I can select this wall. And once again, we see these temporary dimensions that pop up in 3D. Fine, useful. I, I've, I've moved things before in 3D, of course. I kind of prefer to do that if I have to or I can. And it, it works all the same. Now, let's do, let's add one more. Not only can I select that, but I have the option of activating dimensions. And I can see the same thing pops up again and I can see, all right, that's so cool. I can do all of this in 3d as well. So again, let's select all of this. I don't want to select any furniture because that's, you know, we're not trying to move any furniture. I don't really care about that. Honestly should be turning furniture off, but whatever. So I have all of this. I can activate dimensions again and look at this, you know, I, basically I get enough <laughs> to work with and you might think that this is so small what well, it is but I don't care what it is because I can always add a four to it and make it four feet and it moves everything four feet. I can always make it one foot. Like literally, I don't care. I typically would just be adding to these weird numbers because eh, there's a reason I put this wall here and I don't want this wall to be dependent on that one necessarily. All up to you. The design is up to you. But as far as moving them, that's cool. Now with all that, unfortunately, as much as I would like this to happen, uh, I unfortunately does not work with curtain wall grids. Uh, don't ask me why, because I don't know. I didn't make this program. Um, but when it comes to grids, if I add a few here, you know, we can see, well, I have this one and great. I have wonderful temporary dimensions, but if I were to select this next one also, I don't have temporary dimensions. I can't work with that. Now, what I can do is, is physically move them both, which that's cool. That works. Uh, just kind of know that you can't do that the activate dimensions used for temporary dimensions with multiple curtain grids. Eh, I wish it were the case, but it's not the end of the world. Now I will say it does work with the full curtain wall because it's just another wall, you know, that type of thing. It works with all these furniture. If I wanted to select, you know, pieces of these furniture or like all of these here, and I wanted this to be based on something, I can activate dimensions and I can say, well, I want this to be centered, 
you know, two feet from the wall. Boom. Easy. So great. Things like that. So, I mean, I will leave that with you, the rest of everything with you, uh, because we've kind of covered that what we need to when it comes to activating dimensions is basically allowing you to have temporary dimensions used for multiple objects at once to manipulate their location uh, based on anything else. And don't forget to uh, incorporate all of the types of formulas, plus, minus, divide, multiply, using parentheses, put that equals at the beginning. You can, you can do anything you want with that. So I love this. I love this so much. It's very underrated. Definitely tell everyone you know about activating dimension because it's there. Don't always think about it. Don't always know about it or look up, look for it, anything like that. It's right there. It's easy. It works in 3D. It's fantastic. So if you did happen to learn something, please, please, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments because I, I get a lot and I'm happy to answer them, all of them, um, whether it's about activating dimensions or not. Please leave those in the comments. I definitely hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.